ways of the land have become increasingly unfamiliar to the youth of the North. For many, Southern television, video games, and alcohol have supplanted the old ways of their parents and grandparents. With the oil and gas industry replacing traditional Northern economies, fewer youth choose land-based activities like trapping, hunting, and fishing. And so another connection with the land is lost. Elders in Northern Canada, recognizing that the youth in their communities are struggling to identify with their traditional ways and that many do not complete high school, see a need for a program that would reintroduce their youth to traditional land-based activities and develop their self-esteem. I think it's the, the best thing that I've seen is the connection that the boys have with the land. You can see that they really enjoy being out on the land and I think that's a, a connection that's been lost with a lot of the young people and I think that's the greatest thing that these, these kids are getting. I'm Cody Dejele, I live in Toledo. I'm 17 years old and learned lots. Learned how to skin beaver, skin muskrat, trap beaver, trap muskrat, a whole bunch of new things. Working in conjunction with the territorial government, educational partners, and key corporate sponsors, the Fur Institute of Canada designed a program to integrate trapper education with high school curricula. In 2002, the SATU Youth Conservation Education Pilot Project was launched. After hearing the, uh, the comments from the elders and, and uh, the Renewable Resource Councils, um, we decided, and we was the Fur Institute of Canada and the Department of Resources, Wildlife and Economic Development, decided to put together a pilot project that would take young men, teaching them the humane trapping, outdoor skills, the safety part of it, the traditional land skills, and uh, extend what we do from our ordinary trapping program and extend it to uh, a six or seven month program. I think they were pretty good boys when I first met them. But I didn't figure they were going to last that long in a bush. For the first uh, 10 weeks, you know, without even going to town. Nine teenagers spent five months of the winter in an isolated camp, learning bush skills and trapping. First thing I do is teach them that high set, low sets and stuff like that before they even leave camp. Under the supervision of two experienced veteran trappers, the boys are trained in humane trapping techniques and all aspects of wilderness survival. They learn the economic value of wildlife resources in terms of the food value gained, as well as cash value for their fur products. My name is Warren Mouton, and I'm grade 10. I'm from uh, Delna in the BUT. We usually get up about 7.30 and make fire. Nine, we eat breakfast. After breakfast, we warm up our skidoos, and then we go out to our beaver lodges, check uh, if we caught any beaver. Delna, Delna, so long, good luck, over. Later on evening, we start working on our beaver start skinning our beaver. Winter nights are long in the north, but there's no shortage of work for the young trappers. Beaver pelts must be skinned and stretched, two highly skilled tasks that prepare the fur for the international market. One careless move and the value of the pelt could be significantly reduced. For these youths, this is serious work. It's, it's good learning lots about the tradition and some stuff that I haven't learned before that I never knew about that they used to do back in the day. What we've done is we've tried to use the camp setting and what they're doing out on the land as a basis for their schoolwork. We've taken practical courses and integrated that with what they're doing here at the camp. Their education and their outlook on education is greatly enhanced being at the, the camp or being out on the land. For one thing, there's a lot less distractions than what they find in town. Considering that most of these boys were either irregular attenders or non-attenders in school, we've been able to accomplish quite a bit, uh, quite a bit more than we expected at the beginning of the, this course. They've stayed out here for uh, six, almost seven months. 
and they've developed a self-esteem and a motivation to go on further. Here on the land, the boys also discover a renewed commitment to high school. What's more, an important part of their culture is affirmed. Their sense of identity and self-respect is strengthened, and their link to the traditional ways is reclaimed. Prior to completing the program, the boys visit North Bay and Ottawa, learning about the international fur trade. For most, it's their first trip to the South. Take a group of motivated young people, give them the encouragement, the support, and the tools to participate, and to learn, and to be productive in a trade or a field. And as long as they have support from the adults, and the support and the follow-up, then they will succeed at anything. Through this pilot program, the participants earned a significant number of high school credits, as well as money through pelt sales, and mastered modern trapping skills based on both traditional knowledge and the latest humane trapping standards. Many have continued with their schooling. Parents and educators of all the boys have noticed improvement in their attitudes, behavior, and self-esteem. That, uh, that kind of program is extremely important. It allows uh, young people an opportunity to get out on the landscape, to learn some skills from uh, their elders uh, that they can then use themselves to provide a living for themselves and for uh, their families in the, in the future. We believe that it's uh, so important that uh, we're going to be uh, uh, carrying on with uh, programming like that uh, in the future. June 2003. The participants gather to receive their awards. Pride radiates from the faces of the youth, their parents, and gathered friends. So much has been accomplished in the school year just past, much more than was expected. With all the goals met and exceeded, the project partners know they're onto something. This project, they decide, must continue. Congratulations. They are trappers now. They have met and exceeded the goal. They're going to continue their high schooling. And to us, that's the greatest success story of what we do. There are many northern communities and youths in need of projects such as this. Through community consultation, teamwork, and renewed and expanded commitment by public and private partners, the Fur Institute of Canada hopes that this project will flourish in communities across the North. Mm -hmm.